Thank you all for having me and all of y'all for coming and if you'd like to hear what I have to say, I appreciate it very much. My name is Clinton Wesley Morgan. I'm running for the United States Senate. Republican primary against Mitch McConnell. There's about six other candidates, but the primary against Mitch McConnell. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in a little town called Hyden, Kentucky, which is uh, in Leicester County, which is uh, in between Hazard and Manchester, uh, Kentucky. Uh, graduated West County High School, went to East Kentucky University, got a degree. Uh, upon uh, graduating from East Kentucky <coughs> University, I uh, went to work for the United States Treasury Department. Uh, I worked for them in 1980 while I was working for the United States Treasury Department. I was on the protection detail of Vice President Laura Mundell. Uh, I was also on the protection detail of uh, Senator Edward Kennedy when he was running for President of the United States. And I was on the protection detail of uh, John Anderson, who was an independent candidate. Uh, upon uh, my father getting very ill after eight years of service, um, my father asked me to, to come home, and I did. He died six weeks after I got back with a massive heart attack. And then I went in business for myself, and I did what every one of you all do. I, I basically spent most of my time uh, trying to make a living and raise a family, and I, I, I was a faithful Republican. I've been a Republican all my life. I, I, went to every primary and every general election, and I voted Republican. And then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, Barack Obama wins the presidency. And we go, oh my Lord, what in the world is happening? So I started off and I said, Wesley, you gotta get involved, and you gotta get involved quick. And I'm gonna talk really fast, because I got 15 minutes. Uh, I said, you gotta get involved. And so I started uh, donating to candidates, and helping candidates win, Republican candidates. But when I would help them win, I could, when they would go get in office, it seemed like they just joined in with everybody else and it really wasn't changing anything. And I said, well, this ain't, ain't working. So in 2014, uh, when I was leading church one day, that, uh, some people at uh, IE went back to the church, uh, asked me, said, uh, they can't find a candidate from in District 81 for, for state representative, well, you're wrong. And I said, oh my Lord, no. I said, I, I don't know if I could do that or not because it happened. I'm just a good old hillbilly country boy from Hyden, Kentucky, and I, I, I couldn't stand up in front of people and talk to save my life. But uh, they, they talked me into doing it, and I, I ran for that office, didn't know a thing about what I was doing, and didn't, didn't know how to raise money, didn't know anything. And uh, I ran, and I got 42% of the vote. I lost, but I got 42% of the vote in a primary, in a, in a, a district that was 18,000 Democrat and 12,000 Reds from Republicans. I said, this is, this is, I said, we can win this. So I waited to 2016, I ran again, because I'm a constitutional conservative, the Republican leadership really doesn't like constitutional conservatives. They like people who go along, rather than the man that we follow, the blueprint of the Constitution. So they primaried me in 2016. I beat the person they put up in the primary, and then I ran in the general election, I beat Rita Smart, and I flipped District 81 after 50 years of being controlled by the Democrats. I wanted a nobody white, it. and it's because of what I stand for. And then the character assassination started after that. Now I gave you a copy, every one of you have a copy of the bills that I proposed while I was a state representative. And I, I took, and they started feeding stories to the Courier Journal accusing me of everything under the sun because they were doing a character assassination because they wanted me gone because I would not go along with the stuff that they wanted me to do. And let me give you an example of what I wouldn't do. They wanted to change the law, workman's comp law, that if you were totally disabled, totally disabled, they cut you off in 15 years. I said, I can't go along with that. You're talking about a person who's totally disabled, who cannot work and go and do something on the street. But this is what the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce wanted us to do. This is what McCall and, and Hoover and all they wanted us to do, and I would go along with it. The other thing they did was the, the tax increase on uh, uh, like automobile repairs and stuff like that. And I stood up in the caucus meeting and I said, why do you always go after the people who can least afford it? I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I don't vote for taxes, and I'm against taxes. But if you put it on lawyers, I'll vote for it. You know what they said? H-E-L-L-N-O-T. 
this is what's representing us and this is what's going on. Because when you leave, when you get elected for an office, and you go up there and you go into a room with the other elected officials, it doesn't become, it's not about you anymore. It's about me. So then when Hoover started all this sexual harassment stuff, they, got, they brought me in and they said, we're going to go on, we're going to cover this up. We're not going to stop me. I said, I swore an oath to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the, of the state of Kentucky. I said, I will not cover it up. So I called Hoover out, and I'm the person who calls Hoover to have to resign. Well, I got my retribution to that. The Republican Party of Kentucky, and Jeff Hoover, and Mitch McConnell, handpicked the person uh, who happens to be a friend of Jeff Hoover's wife in Richmond, and they totally 100% funded that person and beat me by 350 votes in my front. That's how I got asked All because I wouldn't go along with them. And that is absolutely not the right way to do things. But you've got to understand, any one of you in here, if you got elected and went up there, you would face exactly what I faced. And that is you either go along or they'll put you out. And that's how McConnell's always played too. <coughs> If you don't go along with McConnell, he will primary you. Now, I, I, I suggest to you that you ask your state representative or your state senator if they're independent or if they're afraid that they'll get primary if they don't go along with the insiders, because that's what happens. Now, let me tell you what I'm for. I'm for faith, family, and country. That's what I stand for. I think that we should be free to worship Jesus Christ without persecution. I think we should be free to protect the life of the unborn and express our belief that abortion is morally wrong. I believe that we should be free to educate our children without government indoctrination. I think we should be free to protect our family from all threats without fear of being in prison for possession of firearm, which we have a second amendment right to do. I believe that we should be free to enjoy the fruits of our labor without being taxed absolutely to death and you all know we are being taxed to death. If you work for, uh, for a paycheck, 47, about 47% 47 of that paycheck gone before you're getting. And then once you get the 53%, they just tax you on know, everything else you do. You can't survive and basically all we're doing is we have families that, are, are, that two people are working, bringing home two paychecks, and all they're trying to do is make two car payments and a house payment and have a little bit of money to put clothes on their kids' back and to feed them and then to save a little bit for their college education. And you all know that's not happening. It's not happening because we are being struggled to death. We should be free to obtain affordable health care without the government being involved in it because look how they have wrecked our health care. All you have to do is open it up to the free market. Once you open it up to the free market, Prices will come down, and, and competition solves a lot of problems. And you know that I'm telling you the truth. Free to choose your representatives without, being, without, without them being handpicked by the party elites. You should handpick people. They should, they should come here, talk to you, and then it's your decision on who it is you want to represent you. And then you need, that's the only way you're going to straighten this country out. You should be free to express your opinion without fear of reprisal or censorship. Free to uh, be treated fairly and prosper in peace and safety. That's one of the things that's the main goal of government. They're supposed to provide safety for you, just like the federal government is supposed to provide for common defense. That's the main thing that they're supposed to do. Free to have a news media that does not promote untruths through propaganda. Y'all know that's happening. Now let me take out McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is not a conservative. Mitch McConnell. Uh, Rand Paul got a 92% rating from the Conservative Review, and Mitch McConnell got a 36% rating from the Conservative Review. Mitch McConnell was very unpopular in the state of Kentucky. He only polled 33% across, uh, across Democrats and Republicans and, and, uh, and uh, Libertarians. Only 33%, and he only polls 50-50 with the Republican Party. So we've got a real issue here. We've got a person and if we're not real careful, we're going to end up with the same thing that happened to us with Matt Bailey. We're going to end up with the United States Senator being a Democrat if we're not extremely careful. Now let me tell you some of the things that I have to prove to you for you to consider me to be your uh, uh, candidate for the United States Senate. I have to prove to you that, number one, 
is that Mitchell Hollow being the Senate Majority Leader is not necessarily to your advantage. The second thing I have to prove to you is this thing about running the conservative judges through the Senate is really not what he wants to do. But he's doing it because he knows that President Trump has a 63% approval rate in the state of Kentucky and Mitch is trying to get elected again. And I can tell you, if he is elected again, he will become Donald Trump's worst nightmare because we all know that he did everything in the world under him. We all know that. But let me tell you some things you don't know about. Let me tell you about the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act. They did a, a uh, they slipped into the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act, a bill called the Smith Mont Modernization Act. Anybody ever heard of that? Let me tell you what it does. The Smith Mont Law was passed in 1948. And what it did is it prohibited propaganda, government propaganda, from being used in the news media in the United States. Guess what Mitch and her, her, her did in 2012 when he slipped it in the National Defense Authorization Act? They repealed it. They repealed it. The U.S. repeals the propaganda ban and spreads government made news to Americans. Where do you think fake news come from? Why do you think that they're getting away with it and they say whatever they want to say and nobody can do anything, anybody can do anything about it? Every United States senator is responsible for that. I, I couldn't believe it when I. I mean, what else he did? <coughs> president Trump was elected president November the 8th of 2016. In December of 2016, Mitch McConnell, your senior majority leader, slipped into the 2017 National Defense Authorization Act, House Bill 5181, a bill sponsored by Ted Lieu, the most liberal congressman from California that there is. A bill called Countering Foreign Disinformation and Propaganda Act. Let me look at it. It created a $160 million slush fund to be used by the Broadcasting Board of Governors to censor conservative content in uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. This is the reason we're getting shadow banned and blocked. Because they, they're providing the government money to do this. This is what's happening to us. This is the reason why we're losing our Constitution. This is the reason why it's going on in Virginia. They're getting by with just everything you want to get by with. Let me tell you what else he did to take care of himself. Mitch McConnell slipped into the 2014 spending bill a, a, uh, a change in the law on the campaign finance laws. Up until then, you could donate $32,400 to a party or a committee of a party. Not to an individual, you can't, you can't donate to an individual. Mitch McConnell changed that to $324,000. So that rich people, people who run these big corporations and stuff, can donate to the Republican Senatorial Re-election Committee, can donate $324,000. This is what they call dark money. Have you heard of dark money? This is the money that Mitch McConnell used to beat Chris McDaniel in Mississippi and to beat Judge Moore in Alabama. This is where he come up with the money at. Because there's a group of people that are controlling everything to these politicians and they're feeding them the, this money. Now, I can't get $324,000 to run against Mitch McConnell, but Mitch McConnell get $324,000 to beat me. Now, think about that. They are disenfranchising you, the voter, disenfranchising you to where you cannot have a chance to run against them. Let me show you. About, if you're unbelievable. All this stuff's unbelievable. This is, Senate GOP declares war on conservative troublemakers. The party's campaign arm vows to blackball any firm that works for a primary challenger against one of its incumbents. I went to Washington, D.C. to hire some people to help me do fundraising for this campaign. You know what they said to me? Leslie, we would love to help you. We, we can't stand on home. We'd love to help you, but we can't. If we do, we'll lose every, every contract that we have with, with the federal government, with the, with the Republican Party, or the Democrat Party. They'll cut us off. 
Mr. Morgan, you have about a minute. Okay. Real quick, one more thing, and, uh, and then I will uh, mention the following. Anybody seen this book, cover of this book, Secret Empires by Peter Schweitzer? You need to look this book up. There's an entire chapter dedicated to Elaine Chow and Mitch McConnell and how they have made millions, millions of dollars through her family shipping company that is taking goods from the United States to China. To the point that Mitch McConnell voted for the Clean Air Act to shut down coal in eastern Kentucky. And guess what? His ships are now taking it from Colombia to China, and they're producing two and a half times the coal we want to produce. It. This is what's going on with their economy. This is what's going on with their country. One little thing, if I could get one more thing now. Okay. Defaulting Planned Parenthood. Grandpa went before. The, uh, the faith form in D.C. You can look it up on YouTube. And he says, I went to a high level, high level in leadership. And I looked at him and I said, I want to introduce a bill to defund Planned Parenthood. And that high level person in leadership said, well, you can't do that. And he said, why not? He said, because you're not winning. Mr. McConnell has no, he, he has no way that he, he wants to be on land and He never has tried. He supported everything that uh, Barack Obama did. 